Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. This is going to be an exciting video. I got some cool, cool finds tonight. Who's on board so far? Give you a shout out. Who is it? Hello, hello, hello. My boy, Adam. Ahoy, Roy. Ahoy, Adam. Welcome aboard. Let's get a few peeps on, Adam. You're going to like this. This is this is one of my best of my best finds today. This is a multiplication of, of a lot of stuff. Hey, Jason. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Jason. Funny thing. I've been watching your videos. Sometimes I leave comments. Sometimes I don't. But when you were doing your shower pan, uh, ironically, the same time you're doing yours, um, I gutted two bathrooms in my house, and I'm doing two shower pans myself, but without curbs like you did, um, differently. I don't know where you live, Jace, but um, yeah, um, like like to talk to you. So um, let's uh, let's email. I'll get you my phone number. We'll chat, Jace. All right. Um, also, your Home Depot uh, alarm kind of screeching thing. That was pretty cool, too. Texas, cool beans, man. You're going to love the video tonight. Uh, we're going to touch base with a couple of cool experiments I made today. And uh, one was uh, dielectric. We're going we're gonna to go through... We're going to go through how I have it. Hey, Tommy. Perfect timing, Tommy. Perfect timing. Tommy, I read all your comments today. You know, earlier when I was working on the pool, my pool, and put up that hose and all that, I realized a lot about uh, propagation of electromagnetic waves <clears throat> because water acts just like ether, in a sense. Think like water. And that video really, really did show me uh, what... Um, what, what, what the energy is doing in space itself. Yep, the magnetic pond. That was a good find. So this I bought last week. This really goes horizontal as a laboratory capacitor. And we're going to treat it tonight as an antenna, as two dipoles, okay? And um, we're going to go through the whole system. How I had this all set up because of me. And why I'm even doing this is because I want to know more. I have tons of questions. And the only way I can get the questions is doing the experiments. I, I do a lot of reading. And um, I do more reading in the last, say, five years than I've done my whole life. And I'll be 57 years old soon. So interesting stuff there. And um, pretty much this setup is complicated, but so is everything else. So when you learn everything, it really is complicated, but only because you don't know enough. And as you get to know enough, you can put the complicated pieces together. And this is what we have tonight. And I'll walk it through with you guys. That's right. So, is Made by One Man on here? Is my boy Scott online here? Because I just invited him to come on, so I was kind of waiting for him to get on. Is Scott out there? Scott, give a shout out if you're out there. You guys ever watch that channel, Made by One Man? Anybody know about Scott, Made by One Man? Somebody called Sky. All right, well, if he ain't popped in yet, 
What's up, Dave? We got Dave in the house. Listen, before I get going, guys, here, I'm waiting for here. And um, one thing I wanted to do, and maybe you guys could uh, help me through this process, is I like to have live talk as we're doing live broadcasts like this, live streaming. So what I want to do is engage in conversation with all you guys. How can we do this? Anybody have any good ideas? Do I need a separate phone to where we can talk as we work through experiments or findings? Would it be cool if we can actually talk to each other versus text and have live video feed? So I'm, I'm going to look into it, and I love for us to be able to communicate. Um, I know you guys are young, younger than me, obviously, and um, back in the day when telephones, uh, I need an assistant. <laughs> well, not so much Skype, Jason, but um, uh, <laughs> Mike, that was, uh, Dave, that was funny, um, need an assistant. Um, but back in the day, you used to have this party line that you dialed on the phone, and y'all could talk. So we need it like that in the sense, too, to where maybe we can have people call in and we can engage in <clears throat> two or three conversations or two or three people at the same time. I think that'd be phenomenal. I mean, to me. And the other thing is, too, is you see this, how I have this set up. I'm going to get this off a tripod in my hand. And I want it on my head. So I want to be able to video from my head live. So we call it a phone hookup. Yeah, man. All right, Jay. So, all right, so let's, we're going to get this. Let's get this thing going. I'm picking you off my tripod. Tripod, bye-bye. You guys ready for this? All right. Let's go into it. So where's the electricity coming from in order to run these two capacitor plates? We're going to call this the antenna. Well, let's start off from here. These are magnets. These magnets are all north and south. They have coils wrapped around each one, which right now are disregarded. Totally disregarded. So the, the ends, this is just one wire going all the way around wound different directions so each magnetic pole if the copper wire was induced in the right manner of positive or negative each turn will differentiate from its pole on the front so that it's lined up with the magnets this is down the road kind of internal we're not going to talk about what i've been experimenting on my internal because internally these coils if you take in between that's a negative and that's a positive if you look in here i should have a coil in the center core there is picking up electromagnetic no picking up magnetic wave in the magnetic wave when every time this is making and breaking or not making and breaking but passing a field coil it's going to change the, the, the polarity in the iron core of this coil. This coil now will become energized, which will feed a capacitor plate on the inside. The inside right now has multiple coils which will respond off of here, but this will be a capacitor plate that will, similar, will be similar to this, where there's a conductor on the outside, not a thick dielectric, but a small, thin dielectric, and a capacitor. And then a conductor of aluminum on the inside. So that capacitive inside becomes a electrostatic field. So the collapse, it's an expansion and the collapse. The collapse will have the, the two plates. The two plates will be electrostatic. Let's call that the heart beat. Heart beat. So 
with that being said, we're coming out of the magnet without anything to do with these coils. Just had to tell you what's going on down the road with this stuff on the interior. We're using the magnets. The magnets are going to the PMH. Coming out of the PMH, we're going into this voltage multiplier. We're coming out of the voltage multiplier into this VSR, which is capacitors and a, I think this frequency here is about 1,200 uh, kilohertz. And uh, that's when it's on and runs off a of DC. Now, because we're coming out of AC from the uh, PMH, once you go in the voltage multiplier, it takes two ACs in, but it puts out DC. So that DC that comes from this is going into the uh, VSR. They, those capacitors drain down to zero versus uh, 70 or 70% 70 down, leave 30, and then they bounce back up. There's zero. So they dump the whole damn capacitor. That whole capacitor is being dumped into, guess what? Did a couple of experiments. In a couple of experiments, I found out this is my mock capacitor. I came, first I started by using the, um, these red wires, which are the, um, I guess they control something in the in the microwave, but they're like two or four turn. They're like four turns of some um, wire, and they're a tickler of some sort off the mod. And I said, well, instead of going into this big ass primary, like the secondary, but let me just go into that. This overheated because this frequency is, is 1,200 kilohertz and it's not on all the time. It's pulsing. And when it's pulsed, how long it's, it's back EMF is, it's already did like a Gatling gun. It was like... It's not, an, it's not a single event here. This is... Bam! 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 So every time this guy here makes a contact this is done it's 1200 kilohertz and this is very important so we're coming out of that going into the mod so i said you know what let me try the long ass primary here did it it doesn't get overheated everything <laughs> runs cool so we're coming out of the uh the mod and we're going into one end of the capacitor plate and that's the positive side, uh, the high, high positive side. Now, normally, if you run this in AC, you got to do the numbers that it's 120 volts, yada, yada, and all the turns, and, and it'll tell you how many uh, amps it produces. And we're not dealing with that right now. We're dealing with it coming out of VSR, which is being controlled by the PMH. So with that being said, the, the casing is the ground. So I come off the, because the back end of this high input wire is, is hooked to the casing. There it is right there, hooked to the casing. So come off the casing, we're going to the bottom of this plate, okay? So what we have here is a, is a dipole. Here's your happy antenna, okay? So, um, before that hits this, it comes through one end. See the, the, the contact here? One end of the contact is connected to that. So when that gets it, it only because of this made the contact. So here's how the wheel is controlling this. This is going to be treated. This is something I'm going to show you guys that I've never seen before that I, in, in any of the experiments I ever did. This, this glass right here, glass, it's an it's a eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch. Sixteenth of an inch, not eighth, because two of those make a quarter. It's eighth of an inch thick glass. We are going to turn the wheel. We'll turn the wheel, and this glass is going to light up like a light bulb. For one, and this is not even the best of the night extravaganza because we're going to get into wireless, and we're going to walk outside 
and I have some cool things set up. Over here, I have a voltmeter, okay? This voltmeter is hooked up to DC 20 volts. I have it hooked up, the voltmeter is hooked up to this little array I made. And this array we're gonna use as a gauge to see, we're gonna walk around the environment here and see what voltage we're gonna pick up just from the air, okay? Now what I have here is a germanium diode. So I got four of them set up as a full wave bridge rectifier. So this side here is the DC side and this here is, this is the negative DC, this is the positive DC. So the way I got this set up, let me hit my button here. I got this set up to where this is the positive, the yellow is the positive, the green is the negative. The top and bottom, I have to touch the bottom and have it in my hand. And when it's in my hand, volts will pop up on the voltmeter. All right, so germanium is a, is a crystalline and the, the lattice of that crystalline kind of reminds me of something that is phototonic in a sense to where there's light going off in front of us that we don't even see. We only think we see lightning. But there's light going off on and off that we don't see. And the germanium, because of its crystal lattice of, of its crystal itself, is able to pick up that light we can't see going on and off. It's, to me, in a sense, like a piezo crystal. It's a piezoelectric, meaning that, like our muscles, are piezoelectric. So when we expand and contract our muscles, we make, we make negative ions. These negative ions get caught run through the body and they also get released outside our outer shell okay same thing so the germanian and also i found a report a long time ago about nasa doing a uh, tesla re research and they found they can go several uh, several miles on making light bulbs light up and they used, let's go to the periodic table, because this is very important. So germanium dioids are going to be, it's been a while since I looked at germanium. So where are you, germanium, right? Gallium. All right, here we go. Germanium, number 32, okay? Germanium. But gallium is what NASA used to go miles away. And to me, these are obviously 31, 32, 31 uh, protons and neutrons and 32 protons and neutrons. And then you take the mass of the, you take the mass of that and you subtract that out of the mass and that's how many electrons you have left cool stuff to know about your elements so the elements of what we have here is germanium only because i you know what let me show you a gallium Dioid. Now, these are dioids I have. So that's a germanium dioid. And my gallium dioid, I bought these from Russia. And my gallium are right here. So here is my dioid, my special dioid collection. Here's my gallium. And the gallium, I cannot get to do anything that the germanium do. And I don't know why, but this is a gallium dioid. And this is what the NASA uses, <clears throat> what they did use in 1972. The video was made. Go on YouTube and look for it for wireless transmission. 
Great video to watch, and you get a little spot of why they use those. They'll tell you why, but... So that's this, okay? So that, we're using a bridge rectifier in that. So let's go outside, because once we start this up, we're going to walk outside, and on the drip edge, you can't see it right now. See my hand? See my hand? You can see a little bit, my hand. I have set up here a... a uh, LED with one germanium and when I touch one end it'll light up and this is hooked up only to the drip edge of my building so why would the drip edge really have why would that light up outside and all we're going to we're going to do is tick this but we're going to go through a couple experiments in here before we can get the outside to light up and this was a key research I found today which is why did it light up? Why, 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 why did it before, like now? And why does it light up? You guys ready? Give me a thumbs up. I'm going to put you on the stand for a second. I got to pee. And um, we're going to go outside. You're going to love this. Once I hook up everything the right way, once I hook up everything the right way, no, no, no. No, no, no. I don't know what's going on. But I'm not liking that my video is blanking out. That's right, Adam. I don't know. I'm plugging you guys in just in case I lose. How much power do I have? I got a lot of power. I don't know what that was all about. Did you guys lose me for a second? Did you lose me? Yes or no? Nope. Okay, good. All right, because on my screen recently now, since I've been messing with this stuff, that my screen goes black a lot. And I don't know if it's it, it, it's affecting the rotation, the um, gyroscope rotation on my, uh, my cell phone, which is the iPhone 6 Plus. Yeah, I had this for a good... I don't know, good eight months, maybe seven, eight months. And it hasn't done this. It's starting to do it only because I'm doing these experiments. So notice I have a four foot light bulb here. It's not connected to nothing. The arms are connected to nothing. So it's just going to be sitting here. Okay. And, and it's going to be lighting up. Um, I also have, I got to make right now a, before I go pee, I'm going to make up. Right in front of you guys, I'm going to make up a, a walk around, I call it, LED that lights up. As long as you put an antenna to it, it'll light up when you walk around. But you have to have the positive and negative hooked up the right way. So let me break this out. So here's an LED, here's a germanium diode. You guys go out and buy them. Just like any other diode, you got direction. If you got a ring on the end, you go that up to the positive side. How do you know it's a positive side? The long side of the diode is usually the positive side. So we're going to go ahead and, and twist that around. And then we're going to take the uh, opposite side. And we're going to twist it around. So right there, that's the setup. This is, this is the light bulb that's going to put out voltage in walking around the environment just because we're going to hook, put an antenna on one end and I have to touch the other. And we're going to talk about that down the road. Why do I have to touch the other? Why? That is the, the crazy great question. Why? Leave your comments. Let's see how smart my peeps are. Why do I have to hook up one end? It don't matter what end. And be one end and then it, it, you don't have to do anything. But I usually just loop it and put it back to itself. And it lights up. Why am I the virtual ground? Virtual ground. That's the question to all my peeps tonight. What is virtual ground? I want your comments. I, when I get off this live broadcast, when I come back and look at this tomorrow, I want to see all your comments on virtual ground. It's... You have to go deep. Don't give me basic questions because your body's an antenna. 
Give me, give me, go internally, go deep. Ask yourself the true question. Why do I have to? Go into the elements is a, is a little key, okay? Go into the elements. <clears throat> why, 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 why? You're gonna love this experiment we're gonna do. I got this beer bottle filled with salt water. Obviously, the salt's still at the bottom, right? One there. This came out of uh, 18 bottles I have together in my Tesla coil. But if I take this and shake the salt starts moving around. So if I take this and I take the wire and stick it in the salt water, and hold the other end and walk around everywhere. Why is this becoming a virtual ground? Leave your comments. This is cool stuff we're gonna do tonight. This is crazy cool stuff. Because virtual ground means what? Give me your comments. I want deep comments. Tommy, you're deep, man. You leave paragraphs of stuff. Think periodic table. Think periodic table. The human beings have 65 minerals in us. Himalayan salt also has 65 minerals, and the same minerals our body has. So why is our body able to complete the circuit? Why do I become a virtual ground. What happens to the positive energy? What happens to the negative energy of what we're about to do? We're going to turn this wheel. It's going to create events. We're going to see different things going on here. So you guys tonight, I really want you to think before you leave your comments. I want you to soak in everything you're about to see. Because I'm pretty amazed myself what I'm learning today. And I want you to see what I see today. This is going to be cool. We're going to put this aside. I still haven't peed yet, but I gave you the whole synopsis of, of the whole thing. And see that? We're going to start off with this guy right here. We're going to make this glass. Let's get the wheel turning so you can see the wheel Right there, you can see that. Two seconds to pee. And we're gonna light that glass up like Edison's light bulb. And how, that means we're breaking the dielectric of the glass, which glasses are very, 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 very electric. That means that itself holds the charge, the, uh, the aluminum, the conductors on both sides are just the movers. Cool stuff. You guys, I'm getting up to pee. You guys talk to each other. I don't see no comments. How come everybody's like not commenting? You all quiet, listening? I love this. I want you to comment to each other. And I want you to break down what we're about to see. We're doing multiple stuff. I'm going to break it down. And we're going to start off with lighting that up like a light bulb. Only because we're turning the wheel.
Do we have Scott aboard? Give me a shout out. Who's on? Let's rock and roll this, you guys. All right. Let's connect everything up. We're not even going to get into the experiment yet, but as soon as we do this first, to light that up, we're going to get into the wheel. When I turn the wheel, that relay right there, that relay you see, I'm going to turn the, the camera over so you can see the relay working, and it helps to turn the wheel. You're going to see, not right now, but the second time, I'm going to turn the wheel now to fire that up. When I turn the wheel faster than, a re than the relay can act to, you're going to see something happen. When the RPMs gets up to a certain speed, that it takes off. Only because the relay is electromagnetic. It's got like three quarter inch studs inside of it. So it being fired up by a good 13 volts once it gets past a certain speed, it wants to just take off on its own. So I haven't even ventured why that's happening, but leave your comments that why that is happening. So here you go. I'm going to connect the connections. And uh, the, I'll get into showing you. You ready? Uh, I guess we can... That's the dielectric breaking down. You see that light? Look at that glass lighting up. That's the antenna we're talking about. Let's go over to the relay. You can see the relay fire it up. There's the dielectric. Let's go ahead and take something wireless, like a light bulb, neodescent. It's not even lighting up. You see that, guys? Watch this. Let's take, let's take my little loose guy. Remember I told you the LED all by itself with the germanium? It's not doing anything either. Oh, you see a little light coming off of it. I don't want to get too shocked. If I touch it, it lights up bright. But near it, you can see it barely lighting up. I want to tell you a few things about this experiment, what's really exciting. Let's go ahead and turn the wheel. Look at the edges of the glass. Look how the light shows up on that glass. That is an event happening between these two plates. I've never seen that before. And look at the light bulb. I just noticed that four foot light bulb. All right. Notice that lighting up up top. That's the voltmeter of the wheel. Okay, four volts, three volts. You can see how it's turning. It's doing pretty good by itself. This relay helps it turn. The capacitance plus the dielectric is making that glass light up, which is blowing my mind. Look at the voltage now drops down. This is the voltage only. That's coming from the PMH. So now let's step it up. Now I'm going to go a little faster here. And you're going to see this light light up when that gets to about 7 volts. We're at 5 volts, right? There we go. Light lit up. I want you to see the speed. Now that speed is taken off on its own. Look at the glass. LEDs lit up. The glass is going ballistic. The lights lighting up behind it, and the wheel.
took off on its own, but it will slow down. Right now, it's starting to slow down a little bit, but it's 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 reacting off these two coils here, which are three quarter slugs. Here's your contacts here. All right, you guys are gonna like this. Let's undo the power to the relay. So that's that, what's lever left over in that capacitor right there. So this right here is very important. It's, um, it's, it's, resistive wire. <clears throat> and it's controlling the relay. Now I have that set pretty far apart. So we're going to move it up a little closer. That wire right there will get red. We'll show that. <clears throat> but the wheel will take off pretty damn quick. And as I get it to a certain speed, the wheel goes faster. And you're going to see this. So before I take the glass out, and we're going to do some wireless experiments, because once you have a dielectric, I'm going to tell everybody this is a good internal cookie for everybody. The dielectric in that capacitance as an antenna, absorbs a lot of the wave. If you look at the video that I made earlier with the pool, you'll, you'll notice that when the hose was oscillating by itself, it radiated out. And then when the hose was in a circle, it radiated in, but you see a vortex happening on the, on the compression. That's the same thing here with a dielectric. When you have a dielectric, you'll have, you, you'll, you'll have a, 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 um, your eyes are dilated. So you, it'll have a dilation, okay? It'll have a dilation going on in the center. And watch, if you didn't see the video I made before this, watch it. Because it's a basic, simple, kind of earthly uh, video that I made that just shows I was working on my pool and, and how waves propagated through the water based on a fluctuation of, of pulses. And there's my buddy Tesla. So let's go ahead and um, now we're going to move this closer. Just realize it's, I think it's raining out. I got my windows down. Uh, I guess it won't be too bad. It won't be the first time. So let's connect the relay. You see the relay pull forward. All right, you see the wheel turning, act into the relay. Now we're going to connect the PMH multi voltage multiplier right there. All right, you can see that. I just hooked up that right there. 
Now let's go ahead and turn it. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this wheel turning to a, to me, I think it's 2000 RPMs, but it's a certain speed that needs to happen. You see, there's a back EMF from the load that's on the PMH. The voltage is eight. Look at the wheel, it's taken off. Look at the relay. That's what I was saying. When I hook up the gear to this, this no longer will happen to where there's no contact. But you can see the wheel. Look at the speed of the wheel taking off. Get the light behind it lighting up wirelessly. Now I'm putting a little, this, it needs a spring here. That is being caused, that light you're seeing is being caused by the breakdown of the dielectric, how much volts we're putting out through the mod. All right, let's make it safe for me. So now we're going to go ahead and disconnect everything. And we're going to go ahead and take the glass out. Let's put the lights on. That's where it gets better, my friends. All right. So we're going to... Let's, well, I guess the experiment right now should be how far? Let me do this. Let's turn the lights off. Let's take my little... Well, let's drain it out. Let me turn my... Put my windows... Close my windows. Yeah, now I'm soaking wet. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, it's downpouring. I gotta close my windows. All right. Yeah, super rain. Bam, in its place. So let's do a quick experiment before I take the dielectric out. This experiment is a great one because we're gonna show that we're not gonna get an electromagnetic field stretching out in propagation. Uh, this is gonna be. When I, if you watch my last video with the pool, with the waves, you'll see that when the when the tube came around and made a closed circle, there was a lot inside. It kept a lot inside. Even though the waves came out, that's what we're going to see right now. But once we get rid of the dielectric, it's like opening up the tube, and we'll be able to travel. This is, this is to me, um, monumental to show you guys. And I'm just going to use this germanium dioid with LED. This side here is my antenna. And all I'm going to do is just loop it once or twice. It don't matter because I don't even need a loop. But I'm just doing it so I can carry it. And let's connect the connections. Bada bing. And bada boom. See the wheel turning right there on its own. And let's see what we get. So is the LED lighting up? Right there it is, right? Let's move out. 
It's lit right there, but barely. Barely. So it's swallowing up everything in the center. Let's go ahead and disconnect it. And let's remove the dielectric, the glass, which I broke. And what we're going to do this time, we're going to stretch out the dipoles. So you can see I have about an inch and a half gap there, maybe two inches. Um, one, this is right here is the positive. It's coming out of the mott, the negative from the casing on the mott. Now let's go ahead and connect everything and give it a whirl. And what we'll see is we'll get, we'll, we're able to go outside further Something going on. Let's check it out. I don't want to touch that stuff. Something's not um, enjoying itself. Let me go through some wire in here. So it's going to check in the VSR, see if it's hot, warm. The mott's cold. Something must have disconnected. I think we're good. I think we can fire it back up. So let's check it again. Nothing changes, huh? That's crazy. That 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 light ain't lighting up. I wonder if I blew that light out. Let's check. Let's go over here. We're beeping over there, right? Lights going on. Let's take you guys over to here. Here's the voltmeter. Let's find that bridge rectifier. Oh, what's going on? This should be lighting up. Let's, let's take this wire. Now this wire here goes from the grounding pipe, just the pipe. We're taking ground now. We're gonna cut we're gonna put it to the positive side. Alright. Glad I didn't touch that in the wrong spot. We'll put it to the positive side. Let's put it up here. The positive side. Let's see if it makes any difference. Change the resistance over there. Oh. That was the first time I ever got a little buzz. That was, it hurt. All right. Look at that light lighting up. 
with the ball meter. So the second I took the positive of these two plates and send it to ground, the ground lit up. Why is it that positive? Why is it positive? Why do you send positive to the ground? That don't even make sense. Don't make sense. Let's take a walk. Let's go outside and see if my, in the rain, we got the wheel turning, right? See it turn? We got my LED out here. See if I touch the other end. Look at that. There's the wheel turning. That's the beat of the wheel right now. See that beat? So I got my hand. Let's see if I can do it. You guys can see it. There's my I'm touching the other end of the LED. It's only connected. This is drip flashing of the of the building. And the only when I touch the other end, LED is going. And that beat is what's happening from that wheel is still turning. See that wheel turning? The beat it back to this. Only because it's a cookie I'm giving you guys. What's up, Justin? Is because we're sending the positive to the ground. Look, the wheel stopped. Let's get the wheel. Move it closer. Holy shit. I just caught a good damn buzz. All I was trying to do is switch the poles. Look at my finger. <laughs> Where do you see this? This is crazy. Watch my finger. Look at my finger. Lights on, volts going, watch my finger. Coming from ground. Let's take the ground off. Look at that. You see that? Look at the difference what just happened. Watch this. Let me grab a different bulb. out. You hear that sound? 
That's a harmonic between this and that. That should not be doing that. I step up the voltage on the relay. We're gonna step it up big time, right there. Watch the wheel take off. Lights on, voltage is up. Wheels taken off on its own just because of the relay. You hear me mound? Sounds like a block. It gets even better, guys. Check this out. Let's get it going. Watch this. Slowing down now. Is that amazing? Watch this. This is the ground wire to the other end of this relay. This is this is even crazier. Watch this. So the ground is hooked up and the positive on the other end of the 12 volt battery. Look at how it takes off. Leave your comments. You guys have a great night. Hopefully appreciate it. Peace out.